Hey everybody, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe for more of those kind of things. Today we're talking about rendering in Resolve, just a really quick guide on how to do that, a couple different ways, and maybe, maybe even a setting or two. Let's go. Okay, so here I am in Resolve 17, and I have a beautiful movie here, and I want to export it. There are a couple different ways to do it. The easiest, fastest way is just to go up to File, and you sure would think that you would click on export, but this kind of export is like, take this timeline out of Resolve so that you can use it later or export it or import it into Resolve on a different system or whatever. If you're wanting to render, that's called quick export right here. A Little confusing, but that's a thing. So this quick export gives you a few different options. And honestly, if you don't know a whole lot about video compression and you're just trying to get something up on YouTube or something quick for a client, this is a really great way to just export something. It just gives you kind of the most common basic options. So again, if you want to export for YouTube, it'll set sort of the recommended settings. You can click upload directly to YouTube even. And if you're signed in in the preferences, you can actually upload directly to YouTube or Vimeo or Twitter right here from Resolve, pretty neat. So for a lot of things, you'd probably just hit H.264 or maybe YouTube, and then just hit export. That'll ask you where to put it. I'll put it somewhere super pro like the desktop. And hit save. And that baby will render. Boom. Once it says it's completed, just hit close, and you can find it wherever you want. And guess what? It's working. It's a thing. Nice. Go us. By the way, if you do want to upload directly to YouTube, you can sign in up here under DaVinci Resolve, under Preferences, and here under Internet Accounts, you can sign into whatever accounts you are. It just pops up and asks you if you want to give it permission and stuff like that. Super easy. So now let's talk about the more detailed version of exporting a project. And by exporting, we mean rendering. Down in the bottom of the interface, if we click on Deliver, that will open up everything in the deliver page. This is the page where you render stuff. So if you want somebody to look at your movie and you want a little bit more control over it than the quick export gives you, this is the way to go. Now I have a whole video on render settings, which you can explore right here if you're interested. But basically, if you want to export for YouTube, again, you can go up here to the presets and click on YouTube. This gives you just a little bit more control than the quick export because you can change your video codec and frame rate and all that stuff. And same for the other presets. But then there's also more fancy things like IMFs and different workflows and a preset for just audio only. But what I like to do is click on whatever I want to render to. So like, let's say just YouTube and then switch over to custom because what that'll do is set all of those settings to the recommended settings from the preset. But now you can adjust absolutely everything. In the free version of Resolve, what I'd probably do is just leave everything as the YouTube settings, switch over to custom. And the only thing I'd probably change is just this restrict to. I change that to maybe like 30. And that's pretty good settings for something that you're going to render to YouTube. If you want it to be really nice, I'd take this resolution right here and pump that up to Ultra HD, which is also available in the free version. And I'd set this kilobits per second in thousands to about twice your frame rate. So if my frame rate's 24, I put this at 48,000. That's gonna give you a little bit bigger file, but it's gonna look really nice after you render it to YouTube. And before you start second guessing all of this stuff, the reason I'm recommending this is because of a bunch of tests I've done. This is pretty good. And what's even better is if you have the paid version of Resolve, switch this H.264 to H.265, and this will look even nicer. And the file will be a little bit smaller, but pretty much keep the same Ultra HD at, I guess, 2000 times your frame rate for the kilobits per second. Then you gotta pick a place to put this and a name for it. So these are good settings for YouTube, but if you wanna just make a really high quality video to keep and you know render into other stuff later or maybe use in other projects, here's a real quick guide to those. Just click on custom. Under format, I like to use QuickTime. Under codec, uh, DNxHR is really nice. You could also use GoPro Cineform if you don't like DNxHR. And Basically, the higher you get on this list under type, the bigger the file it's gonna be and the nicer it's gonna look. Most of the time, it's probably overkill, unless you're shooting something like raw or like shooting on a really nice camera and you just have a just a beautiful project, right? But most of the time, if it's like, you know, stock footage or whatever, you could probably do like DNxHR HQ, that would be just fine. And whatever resolution and frame rate you wanna have. And this will be a good just kind of like master for if you wanna use this later or archive it or whatever. Audio, linear PCM, 
can do a little higher bit depth if you want. But that's what I would do in that situation. Whenever you have your settings set for whatever you want to render, you can just hit add to render queue. If you're upscaling it, it's going to say, wait, wh why are you doing that? You know that that's a weird thing to do. And you say, yeah, it's okay. Then that'll add stuff to the render queue over here. The render queue is like the to-do list for anything that you want to render. So you can do multiple different versions of the same movie. You can add multiple different timelines, all of that. In fact, if I did want to add another timeline, you can actually switch the timeline up here above the viewer, switch that to timeline one. Let's say I really like this. This is a different timeline. And again, I can just say, set all my settings and add to render queue. And that'll have both of these jobs here. If I have none of them selected or both of them selected, when I hit this button down here, it's going to render everything here in the render queue. The cool thing about this is you can have all these different kinds of versions and Resolve can do a bunch of work while you go and drink some coffee. Making coffees. And once those are done, you can right click on any of them and say open file location. And good golly, Miss Molly, there's your render. And you can look at it. Look at that. We did it, guys. Bless us, everyone. So there you go. That's how to render in Resolve. If you want more Resolve 17 goodies, right there. Yeah. We've got a Resolve 17 playlist. Teach you all about it. Well, not all about it. I mean, it'll teach you a lot of stuff about it. I'm honestly, it's not going to teach you everything because I can't, no one can teach everything. That's impossible. Because I, did you guys hear that chicken? It was really loud.